Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Thank you, as always, for stopping by. Let's move on to Africa. The Trump administration has more than doubled the pace of airstrikes from the Obama years. Have a look at the graph. It's extraordinary. And Obama was no slouch in these drone wars. Um, and I just wrote about this after I returned from Wajir. I said it is worth noting that U.S. airstrikes in Somalia have flown off the charts, I said. 2019 African Economic Outlook. Um, this is the AFDB. It was released earlier, but I got into it yesterday in a, in a, in a much bigger way. The president, Dr. Akin Wummi Adesina, said Africa's general economic performance continues to improve, GDP reaching an estimated 3.5% in 2018, about the same as in 2017, and up 1.4 percentage points from the 2.1% in 2016. Looking forward, African economic growth is projected to accelerate to 4% in 2019 and 4.1% in 2020. Um, while higher than that of other emerging and developing countries, it remains insufficient to address, address the structural challenges of persistent current and fiscal deficits and debt vulnerability. The challenge is thus twofold to raise the current growth path and to increase the efficiency of growth in generating employment. However, African economies have deindustrialized. Um, structural change is occurring. It has been through the rise of the services sector, which has been largely dominated by informality, low productivity, and an inability to create quality jobs. Um, East Africa led with GDP growth estimated at 5.7% in 2018, followed by North Africa at 4.9%, where Egypt is leading the charge. West Africa at 3.3%, Central Africa at 2.2%, and Southern Africa at 1.2%. Nigeria and South Africa, half of Sub-Saharan African GDP, big drag. Uh, between 2010 and 2018, growth averaged almost 6%, with Djibouti, Ethiopia, Rwanda, and Tanzania recording above average rate growth. Several countries, Burundi and Comoros, growth remains weak due to political uncertainty. Inflation fell from 12.6% in 2017 to 10.9% in 2018 and is projected to further decline to 8.1% in 2020. Remittances continue to gain momentum and dominate the other components of capital flows. At $69 billion in 2017, almost double the size of portfolio investments. O official development assistance peaked in 2013 at $52 billion, since declined to $45 billion in 2017. By the end of 2017, gross government debt to GDP ratio reached 53% in Africa. Um, Africa's working age population is projected to increase from 705 million in 2018 to almost 1 billion by 2030. Millions of young people join the labour market. The pressure to provide decent jobs will intensify. At the current rate of labour force growth, Africa needs to create 12 million new jobs every year to prevent unemployment from rising. Africa has the highest rate of estimated informality in the world at 72% of non-agriculture employment and as high as 90% in some countries. Growth acceleration episodes are also associated with the rise of employment in the mining sector, 10 out of 20 episodes, confirming the specific role of the extractive sector in Africa. A borderless Africa is the foundation of a competitive continental market that could serve as a global business center. 40% of African countries projected to see growth of at least 5% in 2019, about 25% projected to see growth of less than 3%. 
Nigeria and South Africa, dampening Africa's average growth. They account for a large share of Africa's GDP, but only 0.2 to 0.4 percentage points of Africa's GDP. Egypt, the third largest African economy, accounts for more than one percentage point of Africa's growth. So twice, if not more, Nigeria and South Africa. Talking about the uh, dem domestic resource mobilization being key, uh, remittance increases, saying the composition of African debt has shifted away from official and concessional foreign debt towards commercial debt, which has greater service costs. External debt service as a proportion of exports increased from 5% in 2013 to 10% in 2016 saying there are indications that Africa is experiencing premature de-industrialization. This I found interesting. The analysis reveals little firm dynamism in Africa, particularly for small firms' chances of transitioning into medium and large firms. This is a photograph of the president of the African Development Bank with President Buhari, former President Obasanjo, at the inauguration ceremony of President Macky Sall. <coughs> Since 2000, apparel exports from the southern and east African regions have accelerated, driven by preferential trade access through the US AGOA Act. I've said previously that a sub-Saharan African economist has also got to be an accomplished meteorologist because rains have an outsized effect on GDP. They cited one of the risks as being the weather, which is quite correct. Referencing the youth demographic they speak about, many characterize it as a demographic dividend, but for beautiful blaze Compaore, it turned into a demographic terminator. African growth is at a seven-year high, no thanks to its major economies. GDP growth, as, we, as the AFDB said, is set to accelerate to 4% this year. Despite Nigeria and South Africa, which make up almost half of the continent's GDP, pulling down Africa's average growth. Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda and Tanzania all feature on the AFDB's list of 10 fastest growing economies for 2019. Egypt, the biggest economy after Nigeria and South Africa, will also help drive growth. This is an image of the Africa's 10 fastest growing economies from Paul Wallace, and this is an image of the 10 slowest growing economies from Paul Wallace. Ethiopia's Abbey marks one year with record $13 billion of inflows. The funds, some from the World Bank, uh, Emiratis, a lot of people have trooped in to support him, come as the Horn of Africa country seeks to plug a funding gap that the IMF has said poses risks to the nation's medium-term outlook. In the past seven months alone, through investments, loans, grants, remittances and services, we brought $13 billion, Abby said. If we didn't do this, it would have been impossible to get out of our troubles. The IMF in December estimated Ethiopia's public debt would be 57.2% of GDP for the fiscal year ending July 7, and the current account deficit at 6.2% of GDP. While debt is sustainable in the medium term, Ethiopia remains at high risk of debt distress. They've rescheduled 60% of loan repayments to 30 years from 10 years. That must all be to do with the rescheduling of the Addis Djibouti uh, railway line. Looking to uh, privatize, part privatize some of their big uh, SOEs. Um, and uh, basically confirming what the AFDB says, Ethiopia continuing on a high growth path accounts for about 0.2 percentage points more than South Africa, despite accounting for a smaller share of Africa's GDP. I take you back to an article I wrote on the 2nd of July after 90 days of being in office, um, and I, I described him, Abby, as a Virilian and a Gladwellian figure. 
He's been Prime Minister for 90 days. During those 90 days, crisscrossed the country, ended a state of emergency, released thousands of political prisoners, thawed relations with Eritrea, um, bagged a billion dollars from the UAE, and announced a dramatic economic about turn. In my opinion, in matters of language and linguistics, he has tapped into that Nelson Mandela 1994 mood. Um, I said, you know, 90 days represent the most consequential arrival of an African politician on the African stage since Mandela walked out of prison blinking in the sunlight and constructed his rainbow nation. I was watching the France-Argentina game and the arrival of Kylian Mbappe on the world stage at the tender age of 19. I recalled watching the whirling dervishes of the Mevlevi order on a night of a full moon in Konya, Turkey, and I thought, what do they all have in common with Abby? It's all about speed and velocity. Virilio terms it dromology, which he defined as the science of logic and speed. He notes that the speed at which something happens may change its essential nature, and that which moves with speed quickly comes to dominate that which is slower. Whoever controls the territory possesses it. Possession of territory is not primarily about laws and contracts, but first and foremost, a matter of movement and circulation. And let's have no doubt, one thing Abby is doing is circulating and moving. On that same day, as I wrote that article, he said, we are in debt, we have to pay back, but we can't, and secondarily, we aren't able to finish projects we have started, and that day was when he announced his economic pivot. Now we see $13 billion of results. I was saying then, the downside risk of all this infrastructure is plain to see, and Sri Lanka and the tail of its Hambantota port is, is a cautionary, is now a cautionary tale. I said then FX reserves were less than a month's worth of imports and something needed to be done. Expectations are high. Prime Minister needs to execute real quick on the economic front, but if he levels the playing field, a whole troop of folks will be looking to pile in. That troop will include the Ethiopian diaspora, foreign investors, and I'm sure our very own safari camp with M-Pesa. So I remain bullish. I understand the serious challenges, particularly around ground level inter-ethnic fighting, which he hasn't got a lid on yet. But nevertheless, I think, you know, in his articulation, in his arrival, he's really changed the tone. Um, the question is, can he follow through? South African all shares up 9.84% this year, dollar rand, when I checked last, 14.159, but I think the rand is a sell. The IMF says Nigeria's growth is too slow, calls for a single Naira rate. Growing too slowly to reduce poverty or joblessness and urged the government to boost revenue, scrap its system of multiple exchange rates. Growth is not enough, I mean, Mati, the IMF's mission chief for Nigeria. Our number one recommendation is to get the revenue ratio up. It would increase the government's resources and ability to spend on infrastructure. Total spending in the economy is not high enough. To ensure you get long-term investment coming in, you also need to unify the exchange rate. They just won't listen. Talking about low growth and when you factor in population expansion that actually people are going to be worse off. Under current policies, the outlook remains muted. Over the medium term, absent strong reforms, growth would hover around 2.5%, implying no capita per capita growth as the economy faces limited increases in oil production and insufficient adjustment four years after the oil price shock. I compared some time ago Nigeria's Baba Goslo to Egypt's Al Sisi. I accept and don't like Al Sisi's level of repression, but nevertheless, he took the hard decisions when it came to the economy. Al Sisi made bold moves, devalued its currency early, and is now reaping the dividend from its bolder economic policy. 
Nigeria, I said, is still muddling along with its voodoo level FX economics. Nigerian all share had a bit of a tumble yesterday. It's down 5.61%. Investors are not enamored with what is happening in Nigeria. I just found out the brewery stocks, the Diageo stock there, Guinness, is down 30% year to date. This is the proposed urban plan of Juba, South Sudan, from Simon German 600. And uh, he was actually quite dismissive of it. it was, he said it was a pretty picture from the air, but not really cognizant of what humans needed on the ground. He was charged yesterday with running a criminal network. Yes, Vodacom, an economic sabotage. The guy was only one week old as CEO. This offense is unbailable in Tanzania. And this speaks to the risk. I've written about it before and said investors have got to factor in a Magafuli haircut. Kenya private sector expansion is the slowest in 16 months in March, uh, but still expansionary fell to 51 from 51.2. The drop in the PMI doesn't really come as a surprise as agricultural productivity is usually weak in the first quarter, said Gibran Qureshi. I wrote an article which was I thought well informed and I called it reasons for optimism. Have a look at it. This was in January. Nairobi All Share is up 13.99% year to date. Um, on that uh, panel this morning I said if Safaricom is doing well the NSC is pretty much anchored because it constitutes nearly 50% of the market capitalization and it's up about 25% year to date. NSC 20 is up 1.12%. And finally, let me thank you for stopping by and look forward to speaking with you tomorrow. If you haven't tuned in, we're on free to air 8 to 9 o'clock in the evening on the first 24 hour business channel here in Kenya called Metropole TV. We're still working our way through DSTV, etc. But if you want to watch us, Signet is the actual platform you've got to use for now. Thank you so much for stopping by.